So my name's Matt Miller. Um, I've been a high school Spanish teacher for 11 years in Indiana. Um, wrote this book that thankfully all of you are getting a copy of, which makes me very happy. Yeah, thank you ViewSonic for that. So, um, so what I've got for you today is called Hacking Google Slides. And so I have these three, the way I would define hacking is a non-traditional use of a tool. And so when you think of Google Slides, you think so much of, I'm going to do a presentation, I'm going to put my slides up here on the screen, and I'm going to talk to my students, or the students are going to talk to each other. But slides has so much more capability than that. And so I want to show you three ways that I've enjoyed using Google Slides that are non-traditional in that way. And so um, I will tell you that what I'm working on here is, um, Jason, how big is this display? OK, 70-inch interactive display. And so I'm going to be tapping and touching it and everything, which is really cool. And one of my favorite things that it does is that if I hold two fingers on here, I get these little tools. And so I can annotate right on top of this. I can use different colors. There's green, and then there's black. And then if I hit this button right here, it takes a screenshot of what's here, saves it directly into my Google Drive just with one touch. So if you've got Google Drive and you take notes and you've got students that are absent, if you mark all of this up, you can just get them those, hey, Pedro, you can get those, um, get those images directly to the students even if they've totally missed out on, on the class. So that's one of my, my favorite things about this display. So all right, so now that we got the bills paid, <laughs> now I can show you some of, these, some of these cool things. So oh, and by the way, if you do Twitter, and you want to tweet that you're here, take pictures of the things that I'm doing. That's awesome. And if you want to put at ViewSonic in your tweet, that would, be, that would be great. So, OK, so let's jump into the first one. And this is one that, not a fancy name, but something I called a shared presentation. And so one of the greatest things I think about Google Slides and Google Drive in general is that you can get multiple people into a file online, right? And so there's several ways that you can do that. And so what I'll do is I'll create a slide presentation, and I'll make a new slide for every student. And then I'll share it with them. So you can do that with the Share button right here. So I can give them this link. The one key thing to make sure that you do, if you do this, make it anyone with the link can edit. Otherwise, they can only just see it, and they can't actually work in it. So everyone with the link can edit. Either, do, either give them that link, or you can email it to them. Or if you do Google Classroom, just set this up in an assignment or an announcement in Google Classroom. And so those are the easiest ways, I think, to share it. And once you get all the students in here, you'll start to see their little icons popping up right up there. And once they get in there, you give everybody a number. So like my example is on one. So if this was my classroom, I'd say, OK, you've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and give everybody a number. You can even use your roster. And if there are numbers next to the names on the roster, that makes it really easy. And so when they jump in here, I'll have them write their name as the title. And then I'll give them some sort of activity to do. So for me as a high school Spanish teacher, I'll go, OK, we're studying Costa Rica today. I want you to do real quick like um, internet research on Costa Rica. Find me three interesting facts and a picture of Costa Rica. Stick them on that slide. And once my kids are trained to do that, they can do that in like five minutes. And so then everybody's put all this stuff onto their slides. And the amazing thing about it is it creates this, like, if you have 20 students in there, you have a 60-fact, 20-picture slide presentation that you just outsource to your students to do for you in five minutes, which is kind of amazing. So you can flip through their slides and talk about it ahead of time. And it's all things that are interesting to them. And then they can even jump onto each other's slides. And if you say, go look at somebody else's slide and make a comment about it, that kind of turns it into social media. Think about what you do on Facebook and what you do on Twitter and on Instagram and all of that, is you write comments on people's stuff. So if I hit the comment button, it pops this up. And now it almost becomes like a blog or like social media. So using a shared presentation that you share out with all of your students, really, really cool. And the sky's the limit for how you can use it. I would literally use this like once a week or more often because I liked it so much. Questions on that? OK, let's go on to the next one. 
Have you ever seen those flip books that are like the flip book animation? You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, and so each page, the character does a little something different, and when you flip through it, it looks like they're moving. You can totally do that on Google Slides, which is awesome. So here's kind of what it looks like. So if I want to take this rectangle and I want to make it spin, this is just a real quick, simple demonstration so you know how it works. Here's what I would do. I would draw the, the little square, or the little rectangle on here. And then the key part of this is to go duplicate slide. Whoops, what did I just do? There we go. So it's a right click and hit duplicate slide. And so I'm going to actually duplicate this slide. And then I would, make a, I would twist it just a little bit. Duplicate again, twist it a little more. Duplicate it again, twist it a little more. And so once you hit present, let's uh, delete this slide real quick. If I can hit the delete button. There we go. OK. So if I present this, let's go back to the beginning. So as soon as I click through these, watch, click, 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 click. Now it looks like it's spinning, right? OK. So a spinning rectangle is no big deal. <laughs> but. What is a big deal is the stuff you can do with it. Makes me think of battles in history. If you teach history, social studies, I'm thinking, OK, this is the Battle of Little Bighorn. And here's Custer in the army. And then here's Crazy Horse. And so you've got the two sides. And so I'm thinking right here, duplicate, move on to the next slide. And you can see how Custer moves in on Crazy Horse and how the battle all takes place. So that's one way. So see if we present this, watch how they move. Boom, 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 like that. So you can actually show how they converge on each other, which is really cool. So there we go. Here's another one that blows my mind. This was from a science teacher in um, the Philadelphia area. And they were learning about the sodium-potassium pump, and which has to do with muscle contraction. and so. Basically, what they did is they took this abstract concept, and they, they labeled all the different pieces of it. And then they started, that's not going to work. OK. So now you can see how it's moving, right? So it takes this real abstract concept in science, and it turns it into something you can actually wrap your brain around. So that's all stuff that you can do with this idea of animating. Questions on that? All right, I got about three more minutes, and that's going to be just enough time to show you this last thing. By the way, if I'm going too fast or if you have questions, please come see me afterwards. I'm not going anywhere, OK? All right, cool. Very good. All right, so here's the last one. I talked about flip, flip book animation earlier, right? How about the Choose Your Own Adventure books? Did anybody read those? You remember? Yeah, OK. I was a huge Choose Your Own Adventure nut. I mean. It was like the only reason I would go to garage sales with my mom. I would go dig through the books and see if I could find one of those, you know? So if you're not familiar with it, there are these books. And you read the first four or five pages, and it says, if you want to go into the cave, turn to page 42. If you want to go up the hill, turn to page 56. You can totally make one of those using Google Slides. Here's what it could kind of look like. So here's the beginning of the story. Don't worry about that little thing right there. I put a picture on it. And so once you decide which way do you want to turn, left to go south or right to go north, what I've done is I've drawn in this text. And this text right here, let's see, there we go, has a link. And so I type in turn left or south. And I can use the link button right here and see what it links to. It links to slide three. Sometimes people don't realize that the link isn't just for going out to the web. The link can be to other slides. And so if this says turn left or south, it's going to take you there. And so you read through this part, and it says, for some reason, it catches your eye and makes you think, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep driving, or do you want to exit and go to the lake? And so if you want to keep driving, OK, the link is in there, but it's going to link you to this one right here. OK, so that's kind of the nuts and bolts of how it looks inside. Here's what it looks like when you actually present it. And so students would load this up, and then they would hit the Present button. Or you could do this on the screen if you wanted to. 
okay, so you've got all of this. Let's say you turn right and you go north. Oh no, you're cruising for an hour and then traffic grinds to a halt. Do you want to wait it out or do you want to take the gravel road? So what do you say, wait it out or take the gravel road? Gravel road, okay. You turn down the gravel road, still seeking adventure, go through some curves and hills, and there's this gorgeous waterfall and a walking trail. It's a perfect start to your adventurous journey. There you go, yay. Hooray for walking trails, right? And so you can even go back to the first slide and start over. And so if you quit, you put all those links to other slides like that, that's a cool way to make one of these. Students can make those, teachers can make those. So, like I was saying, Google Slides, awesome tool, does so much more than just presenting to the group. So if you've got questions, feel free to hang around. Make sure you get a book if you hung out through the whole presentation. Thank you so much for coming. I hope I'll